Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show, welcome, friend. guys. Wow, you jumped the gun. Didn't even let me get it out. Today, well, today is awesome because we have a special one for you. And by special, I mean this is like a part two from like two years ago. Finally! Yeah, exactly. This is the Haley Mobile. That's right. This is what we call the Haley Special. And we call it that because this has the kicker key. It's got a bunch of KS components. Probably gonna wanna go back and watch it because there are gonna be pieces in this we may kind of graze over that were answered in that video. So I'll definitely put a link to it in the description down below. The reason why it's back in the shop is because it's time for an upgrade. And it's a kicker key upgrade. That's right, we have a pre-release version of the new kicker key 500.1. So Haley is gonna get a base upgrade. Now just a quick refresher what she has in here. Underneath the seat is the kicker key, is the KS components. We have a set of KS component mid base here. The tweeter is located right here. We have the coaxles mounted in the back door. In the rear, we just have a subwoofer, just chilling. And the wiring is hanging out right here. That is not a snake. We're gonna pull out the back piece here, pull out the whole area, and we're gonna add a new amplifier to this little area right here. Now the nice thing for us is that we already actually have all the wiring we need. We have our power and ground eight gauge, we have our high level, and we have our base knob wiring. What we need to do first though is disconnect the power from the battery and then make a new amp board to go here. While Fernando's taking care of that, I'm going to take you guys over to the bench and show you the reason for this video. This is the new Kicker Key 500.1 sub amplifier. And just like the four channel Kicker Key, this thing is a bit magical. Now for those of you that have never seen a Kicker Key and have no idea what I'm talking about, this is the original Kicker Key. It's a four channel amplifier with an EQ DSP auto feature built into it. What makes it nice, is its size. It's tiny. Here's an iPhone Max. Actually, I should do it like this because you can see more of the phone than you can the amplifier. This was a 45 watt by four amplifier. On the sides, it has these dip switches here. You can run this in a couple different ways. You can run it as front and rear like we did in her car. You can run this as a front stage, meaning run an active tweeter and an active mid bass and let the radio do the rear. What is extremely cool about it is this guy, the tuning microphone. You put this on top of your headrest, you plug it into here, you play a pink noise track through it, and it goes ahead and re-EQs the system and sets up time delay, and it sounds amazing. There again, go back and watch the original video to get our reaction to it. There's an on-off switch in the microphone so that you can hear it with and without. And for the last two years, this thing has been doing amazing things, but we've been wanting desperately bad a sub-amp to team up with it. Bring us back to today, the 501. Now the 501 is a sub-amp, 500 watts just for the sub. And comparing the two together, it's a bit bigger amplifier when compared to the original kicker key, but a great five channel amp solution. You can do all your mids and highs, EQ, time align them, and then fix all the problems that factories have and fix all the problems that factory radios have on the low pass side. And what do I mean by that? Cars have really crappy EQ curves, things that just don't look right. After all, we're trying to create bass, and if there's no bass there to amplify, well, then we need some form of an EQ to fix it. This has that built into it. As you'll see as we go forward, it's not just a hook up power ground remote and some speaker wires and throw it in a car and turn the volume up. It's not that. It is going to do kicker key functions for or the subwoofer side. We're super excited about this to get it in the car. Now inside the box naturally is the amplifier, some zip ties, a couple screws, an Allen key, and the RCA inputs. You also have the quick setup guide, and that's really it. Let's go over to the outside of the box though, because there is neat stuff on the outside of the box, specifically this guy right here. This is a QR code, and what you'll be able to do is scan this, and it'll automatically take you to the instruction manual on their site so that you can set up the amplifier. There's also some test tones that you have to download as well. The one thing that is not in the box is this guy right here. This this is the base knob. If you do want a base knob, you're gonna wanna make sure you pick up the CXARC base controller. So there's a lot to talk about, but let's just kinda clear all this away and take a closer look 
at the amplifier itself. A few specs about the amplifier. 150 watts by one at four ohms. It's 300 by one at two ohms and 500 by one at one ohm. Frequency response is 10 to 160 hertz. It has an input sensitivity on low level of 125 millivolts to five volts. On the high level side, it'll do one volt to 40 volts. It has a variable 24 dB per octave electronic crossover, selectable between 40 and 160, and then it also has a subsonic filter crossover, or a high pass crossover, selectable between 10 and 40 hertz. The physical size of the amplifier is eight and one eighth inches long by four and one eighth inch, one and 11 sixteenths deep. So it's a pretty small, powerful amplifier. Now located on the power input side, you have inputs for an eight gauge ground remote turn on and an 8 gauge power. You also have outputs for a 10 gauge positive and negative. Your power and protect lights are also located here. Now let's dig deeper into a couple of those switches. To do that we're going to grab the instruction manual from the internet. When you download the owner's manual for the new key 501, as you scroll through it, obviously there's a table of contents, an overview, important safety, and then this page right here that kind of gives you an overview of everything that this amplifier is capable of. It uses digital circuit for gain matching, frequency crossover control, auto EQ compensation limiter, time delay, and more that automatically tunes your system to an audio file performance in your vehicle. Yeah, it's that cool. Then of course it takes you down down to what we just talked about, all of your power size. And then they have a basic installation process, how to mount the amplifier, how to wire up the amplifier, where your fuse should be. They talk about power wire and the size fuse holder you should be running. If you need to go high level or low level. If you're gonna be doing high level, you cut off these RCAs and you just connect here. If you're gonna be using a distribution block. And then it takes you through all the features on the side of the amplifier and what each one of them means. As you're scrolling down, it starts to get into the features on how to use the amplifier. And then lastly, how to set the amplifier up to make all the magic happen. And no owner's manual be complete without a troubleshooting section. Description of the warranty, our high pass or subsonic filter, our low pass filter, bass boost, zero to 60 dBs at 40 Hertz, gain control, and your RCA input plug, this guy right here. We'll plug in there. DC offset on and off. This is a six volt DC signal that passes over the speaker line. We'll show you how to measure for that to see if your car has it. And of course, on and off. Pressed in is on, out is off. Up here in the top corner, this is where your base knob will plug in. If your input selector is pushed down, you have high level. If it is out, you have low level. We're gonna be doing high level, so we'll push it in. The key activation button here in the corner is a multifunction button that will begin the auto setup process, enter gain matching mode, and toggle between auto setup optimized audio and the original audio. So once you're done, you can turn it on and off to see if it worked or if you like it with the key software or without the key software. And it can also clear any previous setup done on here. Now the last thing located on this end of the amplifier is the gain match LED. This is gonna allow you to turn up the amplifier for maximum gain. And of course, there's a whole setup process for that, which we're gonna walk you through. And with any sub amplifier this will not fix ANC or automatic noise canceling or fake engine growl or anything like that that you want to call it it's not designed to fix that that does have to be bypassed in order for any sub amplifier to go into a car if you're unfamiliar with what it is I'm talking about then you might not have it however if you get done with the install and you rev up your engine and as you do your subwoofer growls louder well then you have some form of fake noise in the car even though we already have our wires run and functioning because the subwoofer been in here for two years, we still need to show you guys what you're gonna be looking for, such as the DC offset, and also what that factory base output looks like. To do that, we're gonna be using a digital multimeter and an RTA. First up, we wanna test for DC offset. To do that, set your digital multimeter to DC current. That's the line with the dashes underneath it. Take your ground end and ground it to the car somewhere. Take your positive test probe and go to your speaker's positive output. It's easiest to start with the driver's side, or if it's a subwoofer, just grab the positive lead. For those of you that are going, wait a minute, sound is AC, what is he, what is he doing? The DC offset is a DC carrier wave that goes 
goes through the system and the manufacturers have decided to sense for that to turn on and off their equipment. It's a really nice and helpful way because in some of these cars they don't have accessory anymore and this thing works great. It's like 100%. When it's on, it's on. When it's off, it's off. It's just like a normal remote turn on. With the car off, we have nothing. With the car on, we get the cool 6 volts. Now for those of you wondering, it's also located on the negative side. This is an RTA or a real time analyzer. It's connected to the electrical outputs from the radio, meaning we're not using a microphone. We're physically looking at the signal coming out, which would normally go into the speakers. What we're playing is pink noise. What that is giving us is a level response coming out of the head unit. But as you can see here, it's anything but level. There's nothing on this side right here. Well, that's where the base is. There's nothing there. There's a bump here. That's probably because she has her bass control and her radio turned up too high. But the rest of this signal, well, it looks like crap too. That's what the kicker key is fixing on the high end side. And up until now, we've had nothing to fix this. Now keep this in mind. When we're done, we'll show you what it looks like after the fact. Now that we know where we're gonna put the amplifier, I'm gonna go and make a template if it's gonna go here. So now that we have our template, we're gonna go and put it in the ABS plastic. For this situation, we're gonna use eighth inch. Repurposing our previous wires and making the amp board like Fernando did. Everything is now zip tied in place and ready for the actual tune to begin. And the first of those is gain match. There's some test tracks you're gonna have to download. And once it's up and functional, that QR code will take you to those tracks. We of course got a pre-release version of those tracks. And they're like most track. We have a zero dB track, a negative five, a negative 10, two sweep tracks. As you guys know, I love reading instructions. So let's go through these instructions. Turn the source unit up three quarters of the way. For example, if it goes up to 30, turn it to 23. Let's do that. And ours in fact does go up to 30, so I put it at 23. Now I do not have the subwoofer connected right now. Uh, it'll work either way, but if you do have the subwoofer connected, when you go into this, it will automatically mute the subwoofer and you will not hear it, which is a nice thing. Press and hold the key button for three seconds until the gain match LED flashes. And it flashed, Let's start the track. With the gain knob all the way down, slowly turn the input gain clockwise until the gain LED lights up. Then turn it down until there's no longer any flashing. There's the little LED right there. Let's turn it down. Keep going. Still there. Still there. All right, that seems to be a good spot. We have no more flash. Once the gain has been set, stop the gain match track quickly and press the key button to exit the mode. So now our gain is set. Let's move on to key a logarithm, which is a cool way of saying, let's start the, you know, the magic. You're now ready to start running the key logarithm. Press and hold the key button for five seconds till the gain match LED goes solid. Then release the button. Start the kicker key sweep track while the key logarithm is running the gain match led will flash slowly this process will take about one and a half minutes after the sweep finishes the gain match led will go dark while it's calculating the correction this takes another 30 seconds if the logarithm runs through successfully the gain match led will begin to flash rapidly for 1.5 seconds if the logarithm fails the gain match led will go solid we, we don't want that to happen let's load in the the sweep track, press this for five seconds, it is ready, let's press play, it's blinking slowly, it just shut off, and then we get quick flashes for one and a half seconds. We were successful, that's it. We should be done as far as the de-equalization goes for the key amplifier. I say we hook up an RTA and see what it looks like. Now, if you remember when we first started this, this side here is that nice, it was a hill, and that's where all our bass went, right down the hill. Press the button, Fernando. 
And look at that. All that is filled in with glorious base. It's almost magical. So it has restored everything that was missing and brought it back to life. Now in the beginning we didn't, we had all the sound here. Well now we have a low pass crossover on so that is not there. Yeah, we got bass back. We need to hook up the sub and actually hear how it sounds. Naturally on a maiden voyage for a brand new amplifier we can't just use any old regular subwoofer. We're gonna be using this guy here. This is the Kicker L7T, or shallow mount driver. As you can see here, it's pretty shallow. Now the reason why we're gonna go with this woofer as opposed to a big box is well, she's in college and she's a coach on a soccer team and she plays soccer and she's gotta carry around a bunch of soccer balls in the back of her car. And the box that was in there, though it's kinda small, still took up a lot of room. I had built a down firing 112 box to go in the back of her car. So this woofer is going to sit like this and get the 500 watts of power going to it. I'm pretty excited, I can't wait to get this in there. This is the box here, it has legs, it'll sit upside down. That is the new enclosure. It gives her a lot of room. Obviously we have enough wire on there that she can slide it anywhere she wants. She can even put it up there where my phone is so that it's out of the way. Noticing right off the bat playing this track is that there's definitely more range to it. It's just not like the previous box was great. Don't get me wrong, it had a lot of boom, but it, there wasn't a lot. There's not a lot of range to it. It's just boom, vibrate, boom, vibrate, boom, vibrate. This one you can pick up. There's a lot of subtleties that are going on that weren't there before. Right. You know, some of that deeper bass. It definitely is playing a lot deep, deep, mm -hmm. way deep. fast need to be a little bit slower but yeah you can hear the range in it that just wasn't there before mm -hmm. ah, the kicker key 501 that's the key that's the key for sure well i hope Haley enjoys this as much as we do every time we get to work on it mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie every time i get the opportunity to drive her car i do you know she's like hey I'll, yeah i'll drive i'll drive mm -hmm. sure <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So we hope you guys enjoyed this first look at the new Kicker Key 501. Right. Sub amplifier, 500 watts at one ohm, banging for sure. Fernando? On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. He's so silly. Bye, guys. Bye.